Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. Pity Beats here from Pop Turnus being too wide. Olaf about City on Fire, which is premiering May 12th on Apple TV Plus. Welcome to the show, man. Thanks so much for being here. Of course. Thank you for having me. It's what it, I mean, you've been you've been doing this for a while in terms of like you go, you film something, it's in the can, and then mm-hmm. they tell you, oh, it's coming out. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. are you still getting are you getting used to it, or is it still something that's still overwhelming? Like, oh man, it's coming out. Like, we gotta do press, we gotta figure this out. <laughs> I, it all happens so quick that you kind of just like it just I, I don't even think about it it's just like oh you're doing press monday for like eight hours and you're like oh yeah okay and then it's like now it's friday now it's may 5th currently show comes out in a week and i still don't feel like it's coming out in a week <laughs> i think it's just like it comes out and then you're like okay well now it's out and then like I think it just takes a while for everything to catch up because everything moves so quickly. A hundred percent. And we, like, I knew about this for a while. Like, I remember reading that you were cast for this and everything. And it's pretty, it's just, it's always a crazy thing when you read about, like, the announcements of it. Not even, like, trailers or anything, like, just the announcements. And then it's like you're talking about it. I still, from the press perspective, that still freaks me out a lot. Like, I remember when that show was announced, which is... I- when was that? Was that like that's like a year and a half ago? Yeah, it was almost two years ago. I feel like. <laughs> yeah. So Jeez. there's a lot of questions I have. I mean, one of the things I kind of really enjoyed about this um, this show was the fact that even though it kind of doesn't seem like obvious, I mean, music is a big part of this show. It's a big focal point of this show. So I, did you notice that when you're reading the scripts? Like, wow, like music's almost like a character in this show a little bit. Um, I definitely feel that way, especially for um, the parts my character is involved in. He's very in that punk rock scene and we get to explore like this, you know, what starts as the cover band of like the original band and then they got like a the deep dark thing. And like, I, I, I didn't like totally realize it throughout, but like once once I saw the episodes, once I got to like really like watch it all in full, I was like, oh, I'm, I really understand what they were going for. Because like when you're making the show, they have some of the songs developed for sure, like yeah. the one... Uh, Max, who plays Nikki Chaos, is singing on stage. Um, but like, then you have like a bunch of other songs in there, like fake album that doesn't exist, that m- does exist, but whatever. Um, and then like, that's also intertwined in the show. And like, they're making that during production, but you know, it's not final and you know, maybe you don't get to hear it. And then finally, like, yeah, again, once it all comes together, it's like, it's really like, oh, okay, got it. Yep, understood. That's really cool. And it's interesting because, you know, the who done it, the crime drama is it's they've always been around. Like they've yeah. always there's always been shows and movies about like murder mysteries and who did it and everything. But I feel like and I don't know if it's because of, you know, the true crime podcast boom and everything. I just feel yeah. like there's a big appetite for that content right now. Like people love the whodunit content. Do you know what I mean by that a little bit? Like it's been around yeah. for a while, but I feel like there's been a surge in popularity with shows like City on Fire. Yeah. I uh yeah, that's interesting. I, I think, you know, I feel like media reflects what the landscape of like the time is like. And I think it's interesting. I don't know the exact reasoning behind that. I mean, I know like I love like on YouTube, there's this guy, JCS, who does like these yes. like he, he goes in on the interrogations and they're so interesting it's like very different not a whodunit at all but like i think the the need or want for that is kind of like the morbid fascination with like the deep dark side of humanity and i think that's what we're exploring right now in a lot of media in a lot of different like ways um and i think i don't know i don't know I, that's my theory of no it's it, it, but it's interesting to think about because i feel like like horror movies as well, you know, you know something about yeah. that as well. I mean, like they've always been around, and then all of a sudden, it's like they're the biggest movies that get made. You know what I mean? They're the ones that are yeah. talked about the most. You know what I mean? And Absolutely. I just I'm find that interesting, right? Well, yeah, a hundred percent. And another quick, like, City on Fire question. Another thing too is we're going back in time. This we're going back to O three and everything. Um, mm. I believe like you were, like you were born in O three, right? Or like so yeah. that's kind of interesting. I feel like right. Absolutely. I mean, I can't wait for all the questions I'm going to get during the press junket. That I <laughs> so you were like, what, like, what's this like? Um, <laughs> which I've done before, like with uh, it. One was like, oh, you know, you weren't born in the 80s. What's it like? Whatever. Yeah. Um, but, 
But I find there's a there's a cool one there where like you were born in 03 specific yes. year. That's kind of cool. Yes. But there's a weird way like I interpret the early 2000s because like I have a weird skewed perception where I'm like I was like five in 2008. I was like five. And to yeah. me, 2008 feels like 2003. And then like I kind of mix it up. And then like the late 2000s are like the early 2000s for me, which I know is not correct. But um, it's interesting, like actually going and and doing this specific time period. There's so many small like nuances. And um, I'm obviously not the person to really talk about it because I wasn't there. But it is interesting because it's like it feels like a time that I should remember, but it's not. Yeah, no, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, all I know is like because I'm, I'm I'm like born in 1991, so like that was when I was really starting to really love movies, right? Like yeah. School of Rock with Jack Black is my favorite movie yeah, yeah. of all time, right? So it's just that was okay. like it's interesting. I love early 2000s movies as well. Like Mulholland Drive is one of my favorites. Oh. Like that, there's such a specific vibe that early 2000s movies have that I love. And I don't know what it is. I really feel like this show did a very good job of like, you feel like you're at 03. Like, I truly believe that. Like, I, it's 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 awesome. And a lot of, it was, like, it's also right before I got into a lot of like screamo emo bands growing up. It was like oh, right yeah. before that, right? Cause like I started like 04, 05, 06. So you <laughs> yeah, see, yeah, yeah. you almost, it's funny because you're talking about some of the, like you and, Ch you, you and Chase character, you're talking about certain bands and stuff. And I'm mm -hmm. thinking about it like, man, like, and then two years later, like, I know exactly like what bands came after those bands. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I used to be a concert promoter. I used to, when I was 16, 17, oh, wow. I was booking shows. Oh, that's sick. And it was, it's, it's, it's crazy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's, it's a, it's a chaotic environment. I can't even imagine working in that. It's insane. Well, there's so many moving parts all the time. And I yeah. think the issue, I mean, it's the same thing with like movie sets and everything. You did like an indie film as well. I mean, like. Anything can go wrong in a second, right? If you think about yeah, it. Right? And usually it kind of does. And then you got to work around it. And that's the whole fun of it. Well, not that. Well, whatever. Yeah. You recently, like, like we're in a, you did an indie film recently, right? That's like making its, like, is it making its film festival rounds right now? Or is it? No, um, it actually did last year. Okay. I, this is something I filmed two years ago. Um, oh. And it's actually getting a theatrical release, uh, a limited theatrical release in, in New York and L.A. on, on May 19th, which I'm very excited for. Um, Perfect. Perfect timing yeah. with the, the both, both projects. Are you going to be able to – four minutes of the press drunk. It's my movie that made it. It's going to be over here. And, and the, yeah, no, it would have that would have been disastrous. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, sure. Um, the movie's called Stay Awake. Uh, it's the director's story about um, dealing with – uh, him and his brother dealing with um, their mom who is uh, addicted to opioids and kind of having to take on uh, that parental role as a, as a kid. Mm -hmm. um, and just about that journey and like what it's like, you know, being the caretaker instead of a movie focused around that, the, the addict, this is a movie for the people who are around those um, who are sick. And okay. um, it's a really impactful story. It uses comedy to kind of uh, help bring people in and like, you know, comedy is a, is a very good way to, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not interpret, not, uh, like soften tragedy. Yeah. Um, like heal maybe a little bit or yeah. 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 And to, to, to communicate tragedy. Yep. Through, um, and that's definitely what the movie uses as well. It's uh, interesting. You mentioned that too, because there's like ghosts on CBS where it's literally like a show about ghosts. Like they're dead, right? It's about yeah. death. Yes, and it's like yeah. a hilarious show. You know what I mean? You think about things like that, right? Like it's yeah. it's definitely – I feel like the mindset for that from an acting perspective – like for you, is it all storytelling or depending on the project, is the mindset change a little bit? Like depending on the genre and the character? I feel like – I feel like for me it's about like the storytelling, like the genre. Yeah. Unless it's like a specific vision from a person that I can like – be like, okay, well, this is like what it's going to be like. Like if for, uh, I am not okay with this, Jonathan Entwistle, like it's very specific style, a very like, you know. <laughs> I loved uh, that show, dude. Like if, if people that know me and know the show, like I <laughs> love that show. You I crushed did too. it in that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you know, uh, like these different you. styles for sure. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that can definitely impact uh, your performance. I, I'm one who trusts the director um through and through so like for me it's like asking what do you want how can i best interpret this character that you know 
you're so close and dear to like what what can i do to bring that to life and just, like that's, yeah. that's fine. just the timing of everything i mean I've, I've said this before i mean like two in my opinion two of netflix's like greatest shows of all time my opinion like up there like i'm not yeah. okay with this in the society both just got like uh, but i know but, yeah i i, it, huh. For, I it's just but you and Sophia, it was cool because you obviously knew each other from the It movies and everything, yeah. but there was just this unbelievable, like, on-screen kind of banter chemistry that was, like, it was pretty... Did you ever talk about that, too? Because you have scenes of her in the It movies, but, like, not like that, you know what I mean? No, 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 no. I mean, I feel like in It, it's, like, everyone had their kind of, like, banter with each other, but, like, not to the extent, because there's so many of us, mm -hmm. and, like, there's, like little relationships between people that would build outside of you know who they played in the main cast and like ever and then we had those two no i think we filmed i'm not okay with this three years after we did it one and like by that point we had done it one and it two and all the press and whatever like i've spent so much time with her and the rest of the cast it's like finally like me and her just get to work together and then it's like this is our just like banter this is our relationship yeah. with one another and like that was so fun because it's still true to this day she was literally over at my apartment last night just to say hi and it just like i don't know it's like filming with someone you're that comfortable with is so fun because it's like yeah it's and just easy the it movies will never not be crazy right i mean you shot those movies a long time ago they're they're always yeah. going to be around like it's never not going to be crazy wyatt i know i know that was seven years ago we shot it one <sighs> And like just some of your scenes too scare the crap out of me with the painting and everything. I had nightmares about that stuff. Just saying, I can't even imagine. I love seeing all like all the behind the scenes of everyone talking. Like we haven't met Pennywise yet. What's it gonna look like? like oh yeah, 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 yeah. That was that was cool. I like that they did that. They were like, I remember one time in like, I don't know, we were in like one of the offices for pre production or something, and then they like closed all the blinds and they like locked us in this room because they were like, he's walking around in his makeup. We don't want you to see him. Remember in the beginning of the interview, I was talking to you about like those booms and like research, like those surges of popular, like popular content, right? Like with like okay. the crime and stuff with City on Fire. The the It movies were like, in my opinion, a big catalyst of like that resurgence and popularity. How does it feel to be kind of part of that kind of ride that like elevated the genre like I'm, I'm like i'm saying like it's it's pretty crazy like it was those were big movies i don't even think of them that way for me they're just like touchstones milestones in my life of yeah. like i worked on and like i honestly haven't taken a step back and like looked at the cultural significance of the movies at at all really yeah. and that's interesting to hear you say that because like i don't think i've i've yeah i've, I've never really viewed it in, in that way it's it 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 it's because part of the gig too is you research, you see what's out there and everything, and like Blumhouse put out the Black Phone movies. Those were very the Black Phone movie right. that was really really popular. You know what I mean? But that yeah. kind of popularity and like that global popularity, like the It movies did that first. You know what hmm. I mean? Like out out of those kind of like fandoms you know what i mean yeah, like yeah, yeah. you guys were first you know what i mean like which was really really interesting to me um and just like some of those scares in the it movies are just because you know how people like dance sometimes like there's jump scares in a lot of james wan stuff and then sometimes there aren't like the yeah, it yeah. movies are scary movies like they're terrifying films they've got a good tone because like it's not all like oh it's it's not all scary too which is like for me what makes it so appealing is like mm -hmm. you're just watching these kids like mess around and just like do whatever yeah and, and they're, do, they're and, doing yeah. i know you're just and it just but like again like like owen t who played billy hockstetter in it right like yeah, yeah, he yeah. was kind of the same way like i was asking him about like they're huge never gonna go right he's like to be honest he's like i don't really think about those things he's just like i went in nope. i did my thing and like i moved on <laughs> to the next project but he's like but it's cool you know what i mean so yeah 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 100 yeah but again too like i you see it online like you did a lot of press for that there was just there was just something for that movie like every day of your life the year it came out right so it was just kind of like <laughs> i mean it defines that part of my life yeah. that's the way i think about it like I, the filming and then all the press stuff like it's very integral to like my journey as a human and 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 in my career like yeah. it's it's so interesting and i never have looked at it from cuz i feel like i've such a skewed look at it that like i never have really stepped back and taken an objective look 
if you just go online, just put like the loser club it, you'll just see all the gifts and the memes and everything. Like there's so many, like that's the squad. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I just, I like walked away and I was like, all right, but you know, that was fun. <laughs> and then there's also going to be, and it's cool too, because there's going to be kind of like a resurgence too, because there, there were talks, like we don't know anything about Casa, but there's like, welcome to dare. Like the, the, it, yeah, there's yeah, going to yeah. be like a TV show, which is pretty yeah. cool. And yeah. that's also going to make people like go back and watch the It movies. Like that's Absolutely. what I think right. happened. That's the coolest thing too, right? Like when that happens, like yeah, with yeah. Cobra Kai, you know how many people went back and watched right. the Karate Kid movie? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. It's interesting. How, like, I think I, what I like is like, that's such a good idea to do like, like a, the prequel, like, cause of course, like you have like a perfect setup for like sequels and prequels. Mm -hmm. For, for it, you got the 27 years earlier and 27, like, you could just keep going. Like, it's like, uh, We I also, we don't know, we don't know, like, the time zones and everything. But, like, I can't see why, like, you know, yourself or, like, Chosen couldn't come back in that show as, like, another character. You know what I mean? Like, that would be kind of cool. 100%. I'm just saying. <laughs> Yeah, I, I got no word on that. Um, but yeah, I agree. I think that's a great idea. <laughs> but I feel like that doesn't happen often as much as it should. Like, I was even looking at other shows. It's like, you could definitely just bring people back in that were in past source material associated with it yeah. as different characters, right? Because then everyone's like, oh, like, they can't come back. It's different time zones. Like, duh. Like, we get that. Yeah. <laughs> but also, I think it's a great opportunity for new young actors to to really shine. And I think that's like, what it one did so well is like we're a bunch, we were a bunch of no ones. I mean, you know, Finn. While we were filming it, one Stranger Things came out, yeah. and then that was crazy. But like, you know, it was just like a bunch of kids that like got 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 this chance, and I think for them to keep doing that was is a really sweet gesture. One of my favorite things to see is all the success and amazing stuff all of you have done. Like, because there there's there's seven of you, right? Yeah, yeah. You've all done like awesome projects after those movies like it's pretty cool yeah. to think about that right it is and it's it's funny because like half of those guys are, are my competition in a way God. but it's not like it's like you know jack i think was uh final like one of the finals for city on fire as well it's like and he was like dude i'm so glad you got that role and he's a hundred percent honest and real with that like it's like we for, both for your, for your for your role yeah interesting but that, and, yeah, but I feel like people in the, like, I feel like that happens. Like, that's going to happen. Yeah. Right? Yeah, exactly. It, it just happens. It's like, I, and then we all audition for, for Y2K. And then, like, Jaden's working on Y2K now. It's like, that's so cool. It's like, we're all, like, very supportive of each other and, and loving. And, like, each project, you know, will, will work for one of us, or maybe it's not one of us, whatever. But, like, yeah, no, 100%. we're very lucky to grow up in the industry together. Like and before that. we wrap up, you know, City on Fire is going to be premiering, you know, May 12th on Apple TV Plus and the episodes rolling out. When I get a chance to watch this series, Wyatt, what are you hoping they'll get out of it takeaway wise specifically? Um, There's a lot. I, it's packed. It's a packed show. Yeah. And it's, and then, you know what? I have to say, some of it's not hard. Some of it's like not an easy watch. You know what I mean? Like, it's, nah, there's some yeah. tough stuff in it. Absolutely. Um, I think because there is so much to this show, there's so many storylines, so many characters, everyone can derive something different. Mm -hmm. uh, for me and for my character, I, I hope to kind of reach that coming of age audience and the audience of like, you need to find, like finding yourself. And that's a theme throughout the show as well. I think that's one of the biggest ones is like, just like finding yourself and your identity. Yep. Um, and I hope that people latch on to Charlie and follow his journey of, um, standing his ground and becoming his own person. Absolutely. No, that's so well said. Yeah, made 12 City on Fire Premier and Apple TV Plus. Why? It's so great chatting with you. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you again for having me. It's a pleasure chatting to you Ab as well. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Stay Awake is going to, you said May 19th, right? Correct. Yes. At select theaters in New York and LA. See if they're around you, please. And then Wide Olaf <laughs> on Instagram, they'll find it, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Just why? <laughs> <laughs> whatever. Yeah, Instagram, yeah. Put whatever. the name in it, you'll find it. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, it's been Pop Turn at YouTube.com slash Pop Turn for previous episodes. Of course, you can catch White Olaf and City on Fire, premiering on Apple TV Plus May 12th. Until next time, it's Wyatt and PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.